capacity of a buffer. Capacity of buffer. This is something that is of pretty high relevance to biologists. And I'll show you in a minute what it actually means and why it is important. So let's just simply start off with a scenario. Let's say we have an acid and a base mixture. So we have acid, and let's say that is 0 0.1 molar. And we have a base. This is also 0 0.1 molar. And let's say we have a pKa of, let's say, 3. Okay? Now, what would be the pH of this buffer? You need your calculator uh, uh, out, so because you, we need to do a little bit of calculations today. Can we calculate the pH? Obviously we can, because otherwise I wouldn't ask this question. What would be the pH? Actually, I don't need a calculator for that. It would be 3. Sebastian says it's 3. So just a quick check. I never trust anyone, uh, not even myself. So there's nothing against you. Sorry? Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe you need to change your outlook on life a little bit, you know, that's... Uh... Anyway, so we use the henderson Hasselbalch equation, pH equals pKa minus log of the acid concentration over the base concentration. Yeah? So we have 3 minus log of 0 0.1 molar divided by 0 0.1 molar. This gives us 1. So we have 3 minus log of 1. Log of 1 gives 0. So we have 3 minus 0. So the pH is 3. And Sebastian is absolutely right. Wonderful. Now let's assume just for say, uh, the argument's sake, that we have one liter solution of the whole thing. So, in a way, we can write this, uh, the whole thing. We can say, okay, for the acid, we have uh, zero... 0 0.1 mole per liter. For the base, we also have 0 0.1 mole per liter. Yeah? It's all in one top pot. And when we do the henderson hasselbalch equation, let me just quickly write this down again. pH equals pKa minus log... 0 0.1 mole per liter divided by 0 0.1 mole per liter. What you see quite conveniently is that we can cancel out the liter very easily. Yeah? I could cancel out the moles as well, but for 
the moment I want to keep the moles. But what you see is the liters cancel out. So in a way, if you take it that way, the buffer, the pH, does not depend on your volume. It does not depend, really, on the total concentration. That is the reason why you were able to dilute your buffer in the practical, and you should have observed that there's hardly any pH change when you dilute your buffer, when you add more water, 10 times more water. Yeah? So buffers are usually fairly <coughs> resistant against dilutions. Or changes in the volume. Okay, so we have 0 0.1 mole acid and 0 0.1 mole base in our buffer here. Right. What are, what's going to happen if we now add 0 0.05 mole of, let's say, Na, NaOH, which is a base? What would happen to the pH? First, do not use your calculator. Just follow your intuition. What's going to happen? Will the pH go up, down, or stays the same? If we add base, what must happen? Up? Who thinks it's up? Hands up. Uh huh. Who thinks it's down? Who thinks, I wish I had breakfast? Yes, good. You always should have breakfast before you come uh, to, to sessions like that. So we anticipate that the pH will go up, right? Because we add base. Now let's see if we can sort of figure out how much it will go up. We said we have 0 0.1 mole acid. And we have 0 0.1 mole base. And we add 0 0.05 mole of sodium hydroxide. OK? What happens to the acid? The new acid concentration. We take away the protons from the acid through the NaOH, don't we? So, how much do we take away from the acid? Zero point zero five. So, from this, the new concentration would be zero point one minus zero point zero five mole. Yeah. What happens to the base? We started with 0 0.1. What happens now? We add. How much do we add? 0 0.05. So plus 0 0.05 mole. So we have our new concentrations, or amounts in this case, because we said we don't care about the volume. So for the acid, we would have 0 0.05. For the base, we would have 0 0.15. Does it make sense? OK, can you calculate now the pH of that? Remember, pH equals pKa, which was 3 
minus log acid over base. What do you get for the pH? Yeah, roughly 3.5. Does this result make sense? Yeah. Loud? It went up. Yeah. It, the pH goes up. You are absolutely right. The pH goes up. And that is in line with our prediction earlier. So this result is good. Yeah? So pH is 3.5. Fantastic. So this was the first part. Let's take a very similar buffer. And now, this buffer has a pKa of 3. The acid concentration is now 0 0.01 mole per liter, and the base concentration is also 0 0.01 mole per liter. <coughs> yeah. Happy with that? What is the pH? Three. Okay, so pH is three. I don't prove that because it's the same thing as before. Acid over base equals one. Log one equals zero. Three minus zero equals still three. So, again, our buffer has a pH of three. Okay, now I add 0 0.05 mole, and again we have one liter, so the liters can, can go, 0 0.05 mole of sodium hydroxide. Okay? What do we expect? Buffer up, down, or stays the same? must go up. Exactly. So, our starting concentration of the acid is 0 0.01 mole. Our starting concentration of the base is also 0 0.01 mole. And our new concentration for the acid equals... Sorry? 0 0.01 minus 0 0.05 gives us? Gives us? Minus. minus. You, you, you look at me like, uh, you know, um, you are completely perplexed. Oh dear, I've, I've, something happened to him. Are you all right? <laughs> so what do we get? <coughs> Equals negative 0 0.04 mole. What happens to the base? base, 0 0.01 plus 0 0.05, and that gives us 0 0.06. Okay, can you calculate the pH, please, with the henderson hasselbalch equation? Okay. 
Sorry? Aha. Aha. So what do you get as the pH? Error. Yeah. Oh, bugger. Uh, error. Why error? You said it already? Because logarithms can't be negative. Logarithms can't, can never be negative. Right? So there's an error. What does this indicate? If you get an error, if you get an error message, obviously there's something wrong. <coughs> obviously, our henderson hasselbalch equation breaks down in this case. And if the henderson hasselbalch equation breaks down, then we can probably safely assume that the concept of buffer breaks down. But what is the difference between our first buffer and this buffer? If you remember, in the first buffer, we had 0.1 mole per liter acid and 0.1 mole per liter base. And in the second buffer, we had 0.01 mole per liter and 0.01 mole per liter base. So the difference is just the concentration of base and the acid. Right? So in the first case, the buffer could easily cope with the amount of sodium hydroxide. In the second case, the buffer said, sorry, no can do. Life sucks and everything is negative, so I can't do the buffering. You're nodding. Is that because of everything is negative or life sucks? Both. No, oh, no. Oh, no. We, 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 we've got a good counseling service on, on campus. Yeah? So, in the first case, the buffer can cope. The buffer has the capacity to deal with the influx of sodium hydroxide. In the second case, the buffer does not have the capacity and is killed by the influx of sodium hydroxide. This is known as the capacity of a buffer. Capacity of a buffer. Which simply means, can the buffer cope with the added amount of protons or hydroxide ions? With the additional amount of acid or base. Can buffer cope? So whenever you use a buffer which is supposed to do what it says on the tin, i.e. buffer a solution, resist any change in the pH when you add acid or base, so whenever you use a buffer for that purpose, you have to make sure that it has enough capacity. Yeah? And very often what you find is that if you have a buffer which is probably, let's say, acid is one millimolar, base is one millimolar. Yeah, that's all right, you know, it's a buffer. Strictly speaking, it's a buffer. But just, you know, by adding a little bit of acid or a little bit of base, of hydroxide ions, you will tip the buffer over its capacity. So whenever you use a buffer, you need to make sure that you get the capacity right. Does that make sense? Absolutely essential. So that is the capacity of a buffer. 
The other thing that I want to do very quickly is another term, and that is called the range of the buffer. So we just talked about the capacity of the buffer, which means how much can the buffer tolerate before it just simply has a nervous breakdown and can't deal with it anymore. Now let's say we have a buffer, pKa is three, hey, why not? We have one liter and Actually, why not? Let's go for 0.1 molar acid and 0.1 molar base. As we had, pH would be? Thank you. pH is 3 again. Now, so that would be 0.1 mole acid. 0.1 mole base. Okay? So, what the buffer, what would happen to the buffer if I add, let's say, 0.09 mole um, acid. Would the buffer be able to cope with it in terms of capacity? Yes, it would, because nothing gets negative, right? So that's, that's good. So what would change would be probably, it, it would change to, let's say, um, do, 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 um, we would get, oh, oh, what would happen if I add 0 0.09 mole of, of, say, NaOH? Would the buffer be all right with that? Yeah? Could it cope? Yes, as well. So, let's say, in this case, the buffer is fine. What would happen if I use a slightly different buffer? Say 0 0.1 mole of acid, molar, mole, acid and 0 0.001 mole of base. pKa is still 3. What would be the pH? What's the pH? Loud? One. Is that right? Dorian, how did you get one? How did you get one? pH equals three minus log of acid, bless you, over base, which is three minus log 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.001. This one here gives uh, 100. Is that right? Log 100 equals 2, so we have 3 minus 2 equals 1. You are absolutely <coughs> right. Note that in this case, our buffer... It still has the pKa of 3, 
but we are two pH units away from the pKa without having added anything. Yeah? So we started with three earlier with the buffer, but we changed the base to a, uh, acid ratio, and now we are two pH units away from our pKa. Can you see that? What would happen if I now add 0, 0.0 mole, 0 0.09 mole of acid to this? Can I do that? I can't really do that because, you know, the buffer breaks down again. What would happen if I add 0 0.009 mole of sodium hydroxide? Can I do that? I can do that. Yeah? You said no? <laughs> it, for the acid, it would be, uh, it would, if I do 0 0.0, what did I say, 0, 0.0? of the acid, if I add this, then I would take away here 0 0.09 from the base and the yeah. buffer would break down. If I did it with sodium hydroxide, what would happen? Yeah. Yeah. Can I do that? Yeah. Yes, because I would, increase, I would decrease this one, but it would increase this one. Yeah? So I could do that before the buffer breaks down. So I could add the hydroxide, but I can't add acid to it. So the difference was that the pH of this strange buffer was two pH units away from the pKa. Yeah? And what we commonly mean by range is the range of a buffer is defined as the pH range in which this buffer works best, in which this buffer has its highest capacity, as range, or I should say pH range, where the buffer has highest capacity. Buffer has highest capacity. That should be a C. And what we usually use, the range is usually pKa plus minus one pH, right, one pH unit. So, for example, if you have, let's say, an acetate buffer, acetate buffer, which has a pKa, or 4.75, this buffer is useful between 3.75 and 5.75. In this pH range, the buffer will work, unless you really try to do naughty things with it i.e. you go beyond the capacity of the buffer. But that is the pH range where you should use this buffer. If you want to do an experiment where you need a buffer of, say, pH 7, and the buffer should actually make sure that there are not too big changes, this acetate buffer would be completely useless 
at pH 7 because it is without its range. So whenever you do an experiment, you need to ask yourself first, what is the pH range where I want this reaction to happen? Where is the pH range where I don't want any changes? So if you, for example, work with proteins, you will usually find that proteins are quite stable, in most cases, stable at pH 7. So most proteins, or many proteins, stable at pH 7. So therefore, you would use a buffer that has a pKa around 7. So for example, a phosphate buffer it has a pKa of 7.2 What's the range? Goes from 6.2 to 8.2. And therefore, this would be a good buffer. Yeah, does that make sense? If you used an acetate buffer with a pKa of 4.75, as I just said, it wouldn't be able to buffer. You can, of course, you can make this acetate buffer to go up to, say, 7, but it would not buffer anything at this pH. Yeah? Uh, another compound which uh, has a buffer at around, uh, has a pKa at around 7, is a compound called tris, tris hydroxymethyl uh, ethyl amine, amino methane, sorry, uh, it's quite a mouthful, and please don't ask me to write down the, 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 the structural formula for that, but that's a very common buffer. It has a pKa of uh, 8.3, Seven, eight, eight 8.3. So the range of that would be between 7.3 and 9.3. It's usually not used for proteins that need a buffer at 7 because it's slightly higher with a 7.3. Um, but if you have a protein that's slightly more basic, that wants a little bit uh, higher pH, you would use a tris buffer. Okay, does that make sense? And obviously you want to have high enough capacity that whatever happens in your solution, that any protons or any hydroxide ions are captured. And the pH doesn't change too much. Does that make sense? One problem remains, and unfortunately we don't understand that problem in biochemistry, because it could very well happen that you have your ideal solution, you have your buffer, pH 7, phosphate buffer, the protein likes pH 7, so ideal conditions. You do your assay and you find that your protein is dead as a doornail. Doesn't work. And people then start scratching their heads and say, why on earth isn't it working? And the reason is, although everything should work quite well, 
For one reason or the other, which we don't understand, the protein doesn't like phosphate. Bizarre as it might be, it doesn't like phosphate. You find that quite often with enzymes, especially enzymes that uh, do something to DNA, so restriction enzymes. These restriction enzymes, which cut DNA at certain points, these restriction enzymes work perfectly fine, let's say, in a TRIS buffer at pH 8. But they don't work in a phosphate buffer at pH 8. Nobody knows the reason. They just simply don't want to work. Right? So, these are the miracles of buffers. How do you make up a buffer if you are requested? Well, you have done uh, buffers. Don't wake him. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, you have made up buffers. <coughs> and uh, I've posted a video about the five steps how you make up a buffer. Please have a look at this uh, video because you will need to do that in one of the exams or in one of the tests. You have to make up a buffer and you probably have seen there are comprehension, there, bop, bop, comprehension questions for your practical. Have you seen them? Yeah, There's only two, but uh, one of them is quite uh, challenging. And I can already reveal that a question like that will be in your exam, where you have to make up a buffer uh, with some components in it. So, for example, the question could be, make up um, 0 0.5 liter of... Uh, acetate buffer the pH should be uh, 5.75 the pKa pKa is 4.75 and this buffer should have a capacity of 200 millimolar That means the total acetate concentration total acetate concentration is 200 millimolar. This buffer should also contain 0 0.5 molar sodium chloride which has a molecular mass of 290, no, 58, sorry, 58.3 gram per mole. It also should have uh, 0.01% of weight per volume of BSA. And you have a stock solution of, let's say, 0.5% and well, a few more components so your job will be to make up a buffer like that within half an hour do the calculations can you do that? this is going to be your task not this one but have a look at the comprehension question in your practical, because I want to discuss that with you tomorrow. Okay? Are you happy with that? Go in peace, but go.